the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, from coast to coast in every state in the Union, present Roger Marx in You Bet Your Life. And here he is, the one, the only... That's me, the Queen of the May. Well, here I am again with $5,500 for one of our couples, George. It's a lot of money, huh? Sure is. Any of them say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him 100 bucks. The word tonight is uh, house. H-O-U-S-E. Beat it. <laughs> Groucho, the first contestants... I've got that duck under my thumb. He won't make a move without me. <laughs> well, Groucho, the first contestants... You to... should see the bill he gets at the end of the month. <laughs> so what's that, George? I was saying... Groucho, the first contestants to try. Groucho the... is not the first contestant. <laughs> no, no, the first contestants to try. If I was the... a contestant, I'd be standing over there and you'd be sitting here. I wish you were. Uh... <laughs> the first contestants. And you're not alone either, George. <laughs> what I was getting at. You're drunk with power, sir. <laughs> The first contestants to try for the $5,500 question tonight were selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. Mm, how uh, interesting. And here they come right now. Mr. Irving Humphrey and Miss Evelyn D. Smith. Come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Irving Humphrey and Miss Evelyn uh, Smith, eh? Uh, Mr. Humphrey, uh, where are you from? Philadelphia originally, West Philadelphia. West Philadelphia, huh? Is that Philadelphia? Yes, it is. West oh, of the river. I see, yeah. Huh? I used to play there, you know, in Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, we had the longest run of any show that ever played in Philadelphia. We played 17 weeks there one year in a show called I'll Say She Is. However, that was before you were born, so there's no point in discussing that. <laughs> You're from West Philadelphia. Did you ever go to Philadelphia? Did you have uh, many a scrapper there in Philadelphia? In pepper pot soup. In pepper pot soup, I see. Miss uh, Eveline Smith, is that right? Uh, my name is not Smith, it's D. Smith. Oh, it's D. Smith, huh? Yes. Well, how did you get such a curious name, uh, D. Smith? How do you spell it? Uh, D apostrophe S. Smith. D apostrophe Smith. Are, are you married? Uh, no, but I'm engaged. Coming down the stretch, eh? <laughs> how long have you been engaged? Oh, about uh, four, four months now. Uh, first time out? Yes. <laughs> Racetrack stuff, you know that. <laughs> well, uh, I better talk to you for a while, I think. <laughs> Mr. Humphrey, uh, you certainly have an interesting occupation. What is it? I'm a tree surgeon. Well, tell me, Doc, are you in practice for yourself, or do you just have a branch office somewhere? <laughs> no, I have my own business. I do business under the name of Humphrey Tree Surgery. I see. Well, how do you get your customers when the trees want you? Do they just wave a limb at you, or...? <laughs> No, we have our ordinary customers, but once in a while we get emergency calls. You, emergency calls? You mean an, an oak tree calls at three in the morning and says, uh, hurry, doc, we're expecting a little acorn? <laughs> Why, a tree could go nuts under those conditions. <laughs> what kind of emergencies can a tree possibly have? Well, when we have windstorms, rainstorms, and whatnot, it usually blows over trees and they lean against wires or buildings and they have to be removed. I see. I suppose this patient is in a bad way. Uh, what, what do you do? Do you give it penicillin? No, usually we cut it up for firewood. <laughs> That's a nice way to treat a patient. <laughs> Said he made a fuel out of him. Huh? <laughs> Evelyn, let's not be so formal. I'll call you Mr. Smith, huh? All right. What sort of work do you do? I'm a double. I suppose I'm slipping. I should have noticed it right away. <laughs> what kind of a double? Double dynamite or double trouble? But by the way, did you see Double Dynamite, the movie I was in with Jane Russell? Not as yet. Well, you ought to see it's playing around. You ought to see it. It's pretty good. All right. Don't forget now. No, I shan't. I'll meet you in the balcony. Now, uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, trouble do you get into, uh, Evelyn? No, I'm a uh, motion picture uh, stunt girl, double. You don't look stunted. Uh. <laughs> I do all the uh, fighting and the falling uh, off cliffs and turning over cars and crashing planes and driving motorcycles and... Well, tell us some more about your work. Uh, you must have had a lot of unusual experiences. Well, uh, I can remember one time when I, uh, I drowned uh, 12 times for Betty Davis in Stolen Life. <laughs> now, what was uh, Betty doing while you were drowning for her? 
Well, I'm not sure, but I think she was having her picture taking, uh, getting artificial respiration. <laughs> Well, you were drowning. <laughs> well, if one of your stars should happen to expect the stalk someday, my advice to you is keep away from the hospital. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk to you two some more, but now I want to give you a chance to earn some money, real money. In just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $5,500 question. But first, I want you to pay close attention to this. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, George? Would you mind explaining the rules? You uh, bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $5,500 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. Now, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected Western Tunes as your category. Now, uh, here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1975. Good. 1975, huh? You've been watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of this Western melody? Play it, Jerry. Wagon wheels. Wagon wheels. What is Wagon that? Wheels. Wagon wheels. Wagon wheels is right. Well, you're on your way. Only, only a tree surgeon would know wagon wheels. <laughs> you're on your way. You have thirty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Remember, you're going for five thousand five hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-nine seventy-five you're going to try? Thirty-nine. Give me the title of this song. Thirty-nine. Thirty. How much? Thirty-nine fifty. Thirty-nine fifty. All right. Give me the title of this song. Play, Mr. Fielding. Twilight on the Trail. Twilight on the Trail is right. You now have $79.25. And here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? 79. 79. Let's see if you can identify this one. OK, Jerry. $158.25. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? 158. 158. What is the name of this song? Play. And you also have... My wife's out there, too. <laughs> and your boyfriend is yeah. out there? Well, maybe they'll get together later, huh? <laughs> but you still wind up with $316.25. That ain't hate. That's right. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. Roger, we invited some beauty operators to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Roberta Pretty Tate. Funny. Her uh, partner is a housewife, Mrs. Uh, Teddy Rochers. Ladies, meet Groucho Marx. You're right you here. Do? Right in here. Right in How do you do? That's it. Welcome, girls, to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Re Roberta Tate and Mrs. Teddy Rochers. Is, is that right? Uh, uh, where are you from, uh, Roberta? Well, I'm a native. You're native what? Native son? Native daughter. Oh, you're a girl, huh? Uh-huh. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, it isn't amazing, but it's certainly amusing. Huh? <laughs> you're a beauty operator? That's right. Well, so am I. Just show me a beauty and I'll start operating. <laughs> are you married? No, I'm not. Now nah, you're talking, kid. <laughs> I'll start operating right after the show. <laughs> Mrs. Teddy Roaches, eh? <laughs> uh, where were you born, Teddy? Well, that's very complicated. Well, it usually is. is. <laughs> Nobody has it easy these days. Well, unusual. This is life is grim right in the beginning. <laughs> See, before I was born, I lived in San Francisco. Before and you were born? <laughs> and after I was born, Many I... Many people prefer it that way. <laughs> and after I was born, I still Wait. lived in San Francisco. But now, just, just a moment, uh, just a moment. <laughs> How did you know you were in San Francisco if you weren't born yet? Ah, but I know. My mother went uh, for a trip, and she told me. So she went for a trip to Europe, and uh, she missed the boat. The, boat. <laughs> the engine was broken or something, so she couldn't come back. Your mother's engine was broken? <laughs> the boat. The boat's engine was broken, and you were in Frisco, and you weren't born yet? No. So in between, you see the two uh, San Francisco stays Well, I was born in Paris. <laughs> well, that's 
clear enough for anybody but me. <laughs> well, judging from your accent, uh, Teddy, you must have remained in France. Uh, did you just get over here recently? Oh, no, I was two weeks old when I came back. <laughs> Was your mother with you at the time? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, that's Paris for you. It's amazing what you can pick up there in two weeks. <laughs> now, come clean now. You just didn't get an accident from spending two weeks in France. What happened? Oh, no, I went back there. When I was five years old, I went back to Paris, you see. Mm -hmm. And I went to the... You didn't like Frisco? Uh, San Francisco? Oh, Paris. yes, I did. But you see, when I was five years old, I just didn't have any... You had no choice in the matter. In, yeah? in the matter. How did you meet your husband, Mrs. Roaches? Oh, that's a very complicated affair, too. Everything is complicated up here, Mrs. Roaches. How did you meet your husband? <laughs> well, I went to take a friend of mine uh, to the boat in Marseille. This is and when you were two weeks old? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was after the war, after the First World War. Oh. That's right. They were and then I got lost. I got lost in the, uh, among all the ships on the quay, you know. And then my husband came along and rescued me. So, and... Uh, you weren't married yet, and he oh, was your no. husband? Oh, well, I mean my future husband. Oh. No, I tried very hard to get away from him, you see. After he'd known me a week, he wanted to marry me. And I didn't want to because I had four other fellows who wanted to marry me at the same time. <laughs> So you must have been pretty hot stuff, eh, Teddy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they are. <laughs> you don't know why these four fellas were chasing you? <laughs> well, if we had more time, I could probably explain it to you, Teddy. <laughs> These French are pretty naive, aren't they? <laughs> well, this has been most interesting, and since we mentioned beauty tonight, my advice to you is to see the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 because it certainly is a beauty. And I know because I'm driving one. Now you're gonna play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $5,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is gonna remind our listeners. The tree surgeon and his partner won $316.25. And the secret word is house. Here we go, let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs associated with famous vocalists. Here's your first question, how much will you bet? $10. No, you talk right up, 1950. kids. 1950. 1950. Okay. 1950. That's the uh, regular bet now. Who made famous the song Over the Rainbow? Judy Garland. One answer between. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to say Judy Garland. Judy Garland is right. And you're on your way. You have thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. All right. Remember, you're going for fifty-five hundred dollars tonight. How much of your uh, thirty-nine fifty you're going to bet? How much would you like to bet? Talk up, kids. Time's a waste. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine dollars. All right. Who made famous the song "When My Baby Smiles at Me"? Oh, if you I don't know. know, take a guess. No, I know. Um, Ted Lewis. You have seventy-eight dollars and fifty cents. All right. Here's your third. Uh, here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? You have seventy-eight dollars and fifty cents. What you say? Oh, 78. <laughs> All right, 78. Who made famous the song, Thanks for the Memory? I know, too. Yes. Come on, kids. Okay, um, Take a stab. If you don't know. Kate Smith. Oh, uh, it's not it anyway. Sorry, it's Bob Hope. Oh, oh right. horrible. <laughs> you now have 50 cents. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 50 cents are you going to risk? Oh. All of it. All right. All right. Who made famous the song When the Blue of the Night? Oh. That's a good gamble, because I don't know. <laughs> well, take a guess. I don't. It's uh, Bing Crosby. Oh. I should have figured that Bing would be in after, Bo after uh, Bob Hope. Well, I I'm sorry, but we don't leave anybody. Nobody leaves here with less than $25. I'm going to give you this one question. Get it right, and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. You ready? Who was buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> it couldn't have been Grant. General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers.
We have a grandfather and a high school boy for you now, Groucho. Uh, Mr. George Bartlett and Mr. Billy Compter come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Grandfather and a high school boy, eh? Which one? Uh, step right up in here, mister. Uh, which one is the high school boy? I am. Oh, you are. Who are you? I'm Billy Compter. Well, I'm glad to know you. Then uh, this is uh, Mr. Bartlett, huh? You're right. George Bartlett, huh? Uh, Billy, how old are you? 17. And what is your age, Mr. Bartlett? Oh, I'm only 91. Really? Got a grip like Jack Dempsey. <laughs> 91, I thought he was 60. Where are you from, Billy? Philadelphia. West Philadelphia? No, I'm from any part of Philadelphia. Oh, I see. Well, that's quite a trick, huh? <laughs> Why are you from Philadelphia, Billy, do you know? Well, there's, there's something about it. My parents live there for one thing. And I guess Just that, for one thing? That's, well, that's, that's pretty necessary. If they live there, then I live here. I see, huh? And you were an accessory to the crime, is that it? <laughs> it was a horrible one. I don't think so. I think you're a fine-looking lad. Thank you. I think you are, too. <laughs> yes, but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> well, I, you got me there. <laughs> Mr. Bartlett, uh, what's your hometown? Vineland, New Jersey. Where? Vineland, New Jersey. Vineland, New Jersey. Yeah. That's near Atlantic City, isn't it? Uh, down along that line, yes. Uh-huh. You're a grandpappy? Oh, only 15 children, uh, grandchildren. Is that so? 15 grandchildren, huh? Eh? On a dead man's chest, huh? <laughs> How'd you happen to get so many grandchildren? <clears throat> Were you well, working have, in the vineyard? Uh, I have six children, and, uh, you know, they all got married. You know what happens after that. <laughs> Frankly, I don't, but I'd be willing to listen to it. <laughs> what sort of work do, you, uh, do your children do? Oh, they're all doctors. They're all doctors? All doctors. No wonder you're so healthy looking. <laughs> you don't look like you ever had a sick day in your life. Uh, well, <clears throat> you? uh, I was... Um, given up to die uh, some few years ago. I was uh, quite ill, and the doctors gave me three days to live. The doctors gave you three days to live? How long ago was this? This was 53 years ago. <laughs> well, for a doctor, that's a pretty accurate diagnosis. <laughs> if there are any doctors listening, I'm only kidding. <laughs> By the way, what are you doing listening? <laughs> Why aren't you in surgery? First thing you know, young Dr. Malone will swipe all your patients. <laughs> Better get back to that groaning board. Now, Mr. Bartlett, uh, to what do you attribute your phenomenal recovery? <clears throat> uh, California climate, principally. <laughs> More liars on this show tonight than we've had in years. <laughs> what are some of the jobs you've held during your career, Mr. Uh, Bartlett? Well, I started out kind of young, selling newspapers on the street uh, right after the Civil War. And uh, shortly after I had been selling the papers for a while, the people in the office thought that uh, I would make a pretty good devil. And so they uh, gave me a position as printer's devil. I worked there for a while, and finally I graduated from there and went to college. After I got through college, I went to work for General Electric Company, where I was made the chief consulting engineer. What sort of work did you do when you came to California? Oh, I dabbled in real estate. And did you make any money? Oh, about $1,000 a day. Really? $1,000 a day? What's... Seven days a week. Is that so? You worked Sundays too, huh? Oh, well, I tell you, I just worked all the time. Say, a thing like, you must have had a lot of money. How long did you, did you keep on making this kind of dough? Well, I kept on. I don't know what, when I would have stopped, but uh, the crash came in 29, and I lost every blooming thing I had. <laughs> well, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. If you hadn't lost your money in the crash of 29, you'd be wiped out in the taxes of 52. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> George, I can't get over how healthy and young you look. What's the secret? Do you have a drink occasionally? Oh, no, I don't drink. Do you smoke? Oh, no. No. You lead an exemplary life, huh? Oh, I don't know about that particularly. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask the next question. <laughs> now, 
Now, Mr. Bartlett, do you have any special philosophy you must have to be so successful? Could you tell us what it is? I don't know particularly, but um, some years ago, I framed a little motto, which I have on my wall in I the office. I framed a little motto some years ago. <laughs> so you framed a motto? I framed the words which made the motto. Oh, it's pretty sharp, this one. And uh, the words were like this. Uh, God and I are partners in this business. God is owner and I am steward. And I've tried to live up to that ever since. Well, that's, that's wonderful, Mr. Bartlett. I want to thank you. Uh, if everybody in this world had a philosophy like that, everybody would live to be 700 years old. Huh? Well, we wouldn't have so many wars anyway. No, we certainly will. Aren't we? Now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the $5,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The tree surgeon and his partner still lead with $316.25. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected observation test as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? About, uh, we'll bet about 19, 1950. Oh, yes, I might just as well bet the $20 on okay. that one. Let's, let's say 19.99. we need it. 19.99. We can, we can flip for the other. All right, here we go. Whose likeness is on a one-cent stamp? Washington. George Washington is right. You're off to a great start. You have $39.99. How about uh, 39.97? Here we go. Is that all right with you, Mr. That's Bartlett? Right. That's right. How many rows of keys does the standard typewriter have? Seven. No, no. Talk it over. About One answer between you. Fourteen. How many rows? How oh, many rows? Oh, 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 I see. Wait, rows can I, we have one more? One, two, three, four. Four rows. Five rows, five mm -hmm. rows. Four. One. What do you one think? answer now. Seven. No, no. A, B, C. Five. Five. No, I'm sorry, it's four. Mm -hmm. You hit it, and then you strayed away from it. Well, that's a shame. They, uh... How much have they got? Three cents. You've got three. <laughs> All right, now you've got three cents. How much are you going to bet? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll risk it. You're going to bet the three. The yeah. colors of the solar spectrum, as in a rainbow, are always in a definite order. What color is on top? It's either uh, red or blue. Which one is blue? Or... One answer now. Blue. He said no, I'm sorry. Red. It's red. <laughs> no, it's red. It's red. <laughs> Well, you did better this way. Now, all right, now they're broke. They're broke. Nobody leaves here broke. We're going to give you one more question for $25. You get this right, and I give you $25, and no helping, please. All right, are you ready? Ready. In what city was the Boston Tea Party? That's tough. Let's see. Uh, what do we decide? Boston. Boston. Boston is right. Put it there, Mr. Bartlett. Put it there. Sorry. Well, gotcha, this couple went broke, so that means that the tree surgeon has partnered with $316.25 in just a minute. Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $5,500 question. Say, Fenneman, I have something for you. It's here. Uh, it's a letter from Mr. Albert L. McKenzie of Campbell, California. It's addressed to me? Of course not. It's addressed to me. What would Albert McKenzie be writing to you about? Oh, I don't know. Uh... For that matter, what would he be writing to me about? Oh, I remember. It's, it's, it's about a used car. Here, read it, George. Oh, gladly. Um, Mr. McKenzie writes, Dear Mr. Marks. That's me. Yeah, I followed your advice, went into a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, and told them Groucho sent me. Well, I purchased a used car. It was fairly priced, and I'm very happy with it. I received a very satisfactory allowance on my old car. The dealer was courteous and very efficient, and had that rare gift of making me feel at home and welcome. The deal was somehow lifted out of the realm of a mere business transaction where you simply got what you paid for and placed on an entirely different plane. It was a novel and pleasing experience. I thought you might be interested in hearing. It's signed, uh, yours very truly, Albert L. McKenzie. Nice guy. Well, friends, I'm sure you'd like that kind of treatment, too. And if you're interested in a used car, visit a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. DeSoto Plymouth dealers, you know, have many makes and models to choose from, and in all price ranges. And remember, George, some of the cars are DeSotas and Plymouths the dealer is serviced from the day they were brand new. That's right. For top values in used cars, for a fair and square deal every time, go to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Well, here's the tree surgeon and his partner, the winning couple of Groucho, all set for the $5,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. 
<laughs> All right, here we go for $5,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. A single answer between you. So think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Shakespeare's famous Romeo and Juliet is the story of two feuding families. Romeo's last name was Montague. For $5,500, what was Juliet's family name? You have one answer between you now. Detangon? No, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Capulet. Capulet. So that means the big question next week will be worth $6,000. That's the most money we ever had. Well, you lost the big money, but you want... How much did they win the quiz? Uh, $316.25. Well, congratulations Thank and you. thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Remember that the dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in and see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for the Groucho Marx Show, you bet your life. Brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, the DeSoto Plymouth dealers also bring you Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on radio every Wednesday night. <laughs>